listening, guys. Um, you know, there's a lot of history here on this island that we can talk about. And one of the things, one of our historical things that we really need to talk about is the shrimping industry and the boat building industry. And uh, today I want to focus on the boat building industry, but I'm going to do something a little different. I'm actually going to teach you how we uh, we built these big shrimp boats, and I think you're going to find it really interesting. Um, I'm bringing to you the presentation that I do for the museum here, and I've done it for the museum in uh, the Lighthouse Museum in St. Augustine, and I've also done it for the uh, uh, the Living History Florida Living History Network. Um, before and uh, I wanted to give it to you today. Uh, the best way to tell about boat building here on Amelia Island is to simply tell you about uh, the history of my family. Uh, my grandfather arrived here uh, from Calumus, Greece in 1912 and his name was Mike Tiliakos and uh, he uh, he started uh, building boats here um, and he met my grandmother and they married in 1914 and um, he started building boats here. And then in 1941, my father, Jimmy Dionis, arrived here from Santorini, Greece and he started building boats. And my dad's boat yard was on the north end of town, right where the uh, uh, container cranes are today for the port and my grandfather's boatyard was on the south end of uh, Front Street where the parking lot is today for the uh, for the city marina the south end parking lot people wanted to know well how long you know how many people did it take to build a boat and uh, this was dad and his crew uh, dad and uh, he had two guys working for him uh, he had uh, Wilson and uh, Snooky, and uh, everybody wanted to know, well, how long did it take to build a boat? Well, it took about four months. And then, of course, once the hull was built, you put it overboard, you launched it, and then you had the rigging and, you know, all of the hardware to get, you know, on the boat. And uh, I've always loved boats. Um, the girls at the museum um, inserted this photograph and well this is me and my first boat with dad um, everybody seems to get a big kick out of this picture I wish they would take it out but so far they haven't but this was taken in front of my grandmother's house up on North Fletcher now here's a photo of um, a new boat this is the keel and uh, it's being prepped and getting ready um, and the, the big timber you see to the right is a uh, part of the horn timber, a part of the uh, shaft log. And then if you look to the left, you'll see a boat under construction. And uh, if you look to the back, you'll see another new boat. Now everybody won't know, well, how long was the keel? Well, it was real simple. You uh, take the length of your boat and uh, subtract 14 feet and that is the length of your keel. And the reason for that was your stern took up 14 feet and your bow stem, uh, seven feet, your bow stem took up seven feet. So seven and seven was 14. Uh, here is a picture of dad and the owner, uh, Mr. Gus Jones, all the way to the right. And then one of the uh, helpers that he had uh, at that time. Now, Dad's boatyard burned in 1958, the one on the north end of town, and uh, around 1960, he moved his operation out off of Clinch Drive. Uh, he and Mr. Rawls um, had an agreement, and uh, Mr. Rawls had a railway, and he pulled boats, and of course, if you look in the back, you'll see the Miss Nina Joe. Uh, it's on the railway for um, uh, uh, annual repairs. Dad also built that boat. And uh, so uh, it was, uh, Dad could build four boats at one time at this facility. Uh, now this is the uh, horn timber and the uh, stern section uh, going in. 
the horn timber, um, and I don't know if you can see my cursor or not, uh, but this is the horn timber, and this is the shaft log, and this is the keel. And if you look right here, and we say the shaft log, this is where the shaft comes out, and this is where the propeller uh, swings is right here. These little notches that you see, uh, this is for the ribs. The ribs will fit in here. We'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, now this is the this is the uh, keel, and this is the bow stem, and it's laying down on its side. And if you look in the back, you'll see another new boat under construction. Now this was my grandfather's boat yard uh, down on the uh, south end, which is now the parking lot of uh, of uh, uh, Front Street, the City Marina. Now they're putting the stern in place, and uh, you can also, in the background, you can see the marina restaurant. Uh, but this is placing the stern, and uh, this is putting the stern in place right here. And uh, these are the workers uh, fastening the stern to the uh, horn timber. And the horn timber just simply held the stern to the boat. Now they're setting the frames up for ribs, and you can see the frames going into place. And uh, then they will put what we call stringers along that, and then the ribs will go in place there. Um, I call this an OSHA nightmare. This was around 1943. Um, when you look at all the debris and you look at the scaffolding, the way it's made, um, I mean, can you imagine? the building uh, if OSHA were to come in the OSHA that we have today were to come in and see that they probably would all faint uh, but you know this is the way it was all done back in those days um, didn't have any accidents um, the job got done and the job got done right um, and this is as it was in the early 50s now I put this up because I wanted to point out a couple of things to you. Um, again, I don't know if you can see my cursor or not, but over to the extreme right of this photo, you'll see a houseboat. And uh, there were several houseboats along the uh, riverfront uh, back when I was a kid growing up. And uh, But if you look, uh, at this little alcove here on this houseboat, that was the bathroom. And of course, you can see where it went. It, everything went overboard. Uh, today, that would be a huge no-no. Uh, that just wouldn't happen. Now we're putting, uh, doing the ribs, getting them in the boat. And uh, people wanted to know, well, how did you bend the ribs? If you look over to the bottom left, uh, you'll see a mold. And then if you look just to the right of the mold, you'll see the end of a big pot. This pot was about, oh, probably close to 28, 30 feet in length. And we would put the ribs in there and boil them for anywhere for about eight hours. And when we took the ribs out and put them on the mold and bent them over, it was like a piece of wet spaghetti. And the next morning they held that shape and then that's what we put in the boat and uh, attached them to the uh, stringers that went on the frames as we saw in uh, a couple of frames back. Now here's a boat uh, just showing you the ribs as they're sticking up. Uh, they're in the boat and we're getting ready now for uh, to start planking the boat. Uh, this is looking inside after the ribs have been uh, all in place. And if you look and see the uh, stringers, um, now these are what's known as stiffeners. And if you look, these are two batons and they're doubled up. So there's actually four two batons and four two batons, and then we've got a two baton doubled up here. And uh, this is the keel, this is the shaft log, this is the horn timber, 
and of course you have the sperm. Um, and these are the ribs. Now this boat now is ready for floor timbers and to start planking. Now this is beginning the planking. Uh, we started at the top on this particular boat and but you always start at the top and work your way down and you know the reason for that is is because a lot of these boats were built in the outdoors and of course you know they were subject to rain and the elements and if you started at the bottom then you're I tell people you're building a bathtub and that's not something you wanted to do so you start at the top and work your way down uh, now we're doing the planking on the boat. Uh, this is a photo of my two brothers, uh, Mike and George. Uh, George was the baby of the family. and He passed away reluctantly about uh, 15 years ago. And Mike and I are the only two left now. And um, uh, we're very close. Uh, but as you can see, I mean, here's a boat uh, under construction. The planking is coming down. And we, what's left is the very bottom next to the keel. Uh, people want to know, well, what did you plank with? Well, we planked with, uh, with cypress. It was absolutely uh, bone dry cypress that we planked with. Uh, beautiful, beautiful wood. I don't even know that you could get wood that uh, pure and clean anymore. Uh, but that's what we used. And uh, this is some more uh, showing the planking and uh, boat, different boats under construction. If you look to the right, you'll see a, a brand new boat that the ribs have just been put in. You look to the left, you see a boat that the planking has started on. And you can't see it in this photo, but if you look to the extreme right, there would have been two more boats under construction. There were four under construction at one time in this picture, or at this time at the boat yard. Uh, now the floor timbers are going in, and uh, this is looking inside the boat. And now you've got the floor timbers going in, and a lot of uh, boat builders put the floor timbers in and put them alongside the ribs. We always put ours on top of the ribs, and uh, every one was bolted uh, to the ribs. And you can't see because of this post. But uh, it's right in the middle. There was also um, a bolt that went through uh, all the way through and it held the floor timbers in place. Uh, now the decking uh, comes into place and uh, the uh, this is just a photo of a uh, a boat that the decking's on. And you know, you've always heard of uh, the Dixie Queen. The, the Dixie Queen won all of the shrimp boat races, or 90% of them, I think. Well, this is a picture of the Dixie Queen uh, as it was uh, getting ready to be launched. Uh, she was brand new and uh, getting ready to be launched. <clears throat> so this is just a little bit of history. Uh, going back uh, to the uh, early 60s. Now we're uh, inside the boat and uh, this is down in the engine room. And uh, as you can see, the floor timbers are in place, the flooring's going in place. Remember the stiffeners we talked about and we planked in between uh, the stiffeners. And this is the, the, this these are the engine beds. So this is where the engine will sit. Again, my two brothers, George and Mike. Um, and uh, they were, uh, uh, you know, these boats really took shape, had a lot. Uh, fuel tanks would have uh, had to be made for these uh, inside the uh, uh, engine rooms is where the fuel tanks would go. And, and they held roughly about anywhere from 10 to 13, 14,000 gallons of fuel. Uh, another picture, this is looking forward uh, from the engine room, looking forward to the bow. Uh, these are natural knees that we put in place. And you can see all the bolts and the stiffeners uh, that uh, go to each rib. 
this is a picture of people wanted to know, you know, did, uh, did you build anything other than shrimp boats? And the answer was yes. Uh, we also built some uh, motor yachts. Uh, this is a motor yacht that was built. Uh, uh, my uncle Johnny uh, built this uh, particular yacht. And um, this is my cousin Anna uh, standing on the deck uh, of this particular boat. Uh, this is the, the Miss Dot, uh, my dad launched at his boatyard, uh, the original one before it burnt down on the north end of town. Uh, some beautiful lines to the, these boats. Uh, the Mr. Mike, uh, this was named after my grandfather. Uh, this is a picture of the Mr. Mike just before it was launched. And I always thought this boat had some of the prettiest lines uh, uh, and design that still to this day that I think I've ever seen. Uh, this was a boat that was actually named after me. It was, the name of the boat was the grandchild. and I was the first grandchild and uh, so it was uh, it was named after me and uh, I was uh, I was quite proud of that. Uh, in fact uh, there I am on the deck and uh, I uh, I thought it was something to have a boat named after me or named for me. And uh, here I am on the dock um, looking at another new boat that's getting ready to be launched. Launch day was always really exciting, uh, not only for us as a family, but people would come from within the community and uh, to take photographs. And, you know, uh, you could see the old eight millimeter or 16 millimeter, whatever it was, home movie projectors. And they would wind them up. They were all spring loaded. And um, they would, you know, take footage of the boats going down and hitting the water for the first time. And it was exciting. It was like uh, giving birth, you know, to uh, almost to a living entity. <clears throat> Here's the Michael T. Michael T. was named after a cousin of mine and also the Mr. Mike. And here we are. This is the uh, prop in the rudder uh, going in. And, um, you know, people would say, well, you know, you know, you, you couldn't go and buy this uh, like the, the rudder. I mean, you had to design the rudder according to the boat. Uh, how much water did it draw? How much power was it going to have? How many blades were on the propeller? Uh, how big was the propeller going to be? One of the largest propellers that I remember that we put into place was on the Little Archie. And the Little Archie was a uh, boat that we built. She was about, oh, 76 feet. And it was an experimental boat um, that was endorsed by the University of Georgia and also uh, Caterpillar. Uh, had a lot of horsepower. Uh, the shaft was a four and a half inch Monel shaft and it swung a uh, like a, I can't remember exactly, I want to say a 64 inch prop, which was uh, quite a large prop. Uh, but what that boat was built for, uh, it went off uh, past the continental shelf out in that area to the continental shelf and drug the bottom for, for fish. Not so much shrimp, but for fish. And uh, was very successful. This is the uh, Miss Hazel. And the reason I've got a photo of this boat, uh, I had a phone call one day from um, Captain Bunny Sterling. And uh, Bunny told me, he said, Nick, I, I, I got to tell you something. He said, I saw the Miss Hazel, and uh, he said, you're not going to believe this, but I saw the Miss Hazel in Mayport. I said, you're right, I don't believe you. He said, no, I'm serious. He said, I saw the Miss Hazel. Now, the reason I said that was Dad built this boat back in the middle 50s. So about a month later, I had to go to Jacksonville, uh, Dale and I, and so on the way back, I purposely came to Mayport. And uh, sure enough, the Miss Hazel was there. So I parked and got out of the car and went and met the owners and uh, took a, a couple of photographs. And 
uh, um, this is the boat. Uh, they had it up on uh, dry dock, and uh, it's in very, very good shape. Uh, it just goes to show that these boats will last many, many, many years. Uh, and it was so funny because everywhere I looked, uh, I could see Dad and his work uh, everywhere. Um, people wanted to know, do you still build boats? And uh, the answer is, well, yeah. But uh, I only build now for uh, select uh, very high profile customers, uh, very influential customers, let's put it that way. I had an order for a boat um, and uh, the owner only wanted the boat to be 10 foot long. But he wanted the boat uh, to carry uh, three to four, you know, adults. Well, if you think about it, uh, you know, that's pretty hard to build a boat only 10 foot in length that will carry three to four adults. So I took and um, I actually built the half model for this particular boat and uh, got the width and the breadth and everything down and uh, did it. Now, this very high profile uh, influential customer uh, just happened to be our great grandson, Braden. So this is on launch day and uh, Braden's sitting in his new boat and uh, we're getting ready to put it in and uh, we're actually going to see if this thing will float. And so there's Braden uh, in his new boat with Papu. Now Papu is his engine. So wherever Braden wants to go, Papu's going to get him there. But I want to point something out to you. This boat is 48 inches in width and it is exactly from the tip of the bow to the tip of the stern is uh, 10 foot in length. But I want you to look at how much water it's drawing now. We've got, uh, with Jamie and Braden in the boat, we're looking at about close to 300 pounds, 285 pounds. And that boat is not drawing a half inch of water. So if you design your boats properly, uh, you can accomplish most anything that you want. It's, it all goes into the design of the boat. Uh, here they are again, and uh, uh, it looks like Papu's got his hands full trying to figure out where Brayton wants to go. This is a picture of Dad. Um, this is uh, looking from inside of the pilot house, looking out uh, to him. Um, I hope you have. Um, uh, I hope you have uh, enjoyed this, and I hope you've picked up a few tips on how these boats were built. Uh, and it was, it was like I said, it was quite an industry. We had uh, at any one given time between the two boat yards, we had anywhere from four to eight boats being built at one time. And of course, if it took uh, four months to build a boat, then you do the math. Uh, we had a launching uh, quite frequently. And uh, people would come out of the woodwork, you know, to uh, for a launching. And, uh, but it was, a, it was a time where this is, you know, people came from all over to get boats built right here on Amelia Island. And, uh, you know, it was funny, I don't ever remember uh, contracts or attorneys or anything like that. I just remember people coming and saying, you know, I want a boat and I want a 65 foot shrimp boat. And they would say, okay, you know, well, tell me where you want to fish. Well, I want to fish in the uh, shallows of Georgia or I want to fish in the depths of the East Coast. So this kind of told us, you know, how much water the boat was going to draw, how much power it was going to need. And um, it was a handshake. And um, I don't ever remember any problems. Of course, I don't think you could do that today. Um, I just, I just don't think you could do that today. But that's the way it was back in those days. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this. Um, 
this is a something, this is a segment, this is an episode that I wanted to uh, give to you, uh, and I hope you'll uh, go back and look. If you have any questions, please feel free to, uh, you can private message me on uh, Facebook. Uh, just go to uh, Amelia Island Footprints on Facebook, or you can go to uh, YouTube, Amelia Island Footprints on YouTube. And um, please hit the um, please hit the subscribe button and be sure on Facebook to like it and share it. Uh, that's a big thing. So um, anyway, uh, we got some more uh, interviews coming up. Uh, they'll be coming out uh, shortly. And um, I hope you've enjoyed this one. So until next time, God bless.